What's up GX fans? It's me Lil Karibo and I know what you're thinking, he's found his hair. It's clearly my hair. It looks totally natural. It fits perfectly. I look like a regular Falero. And you know what? Like always, my hair was in the last place I thought to look. It was in a little private room in a little glass display case labeled the hair of the most famous duelist who ever attended Duel Academy. And I was like, but that's my hair, clearly. Looks just like mine. So I nabbed it and put it on. Yeah, why not? It's my hair, clearly. Yeah, my hair. And clearly not a sh T Jaden wig. It's my hair. So yeah, welcome to Little Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX episode 8. Which, if you've not been watching, is a show where me and my completely natural hair watch an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the dub, every week, if possible. It wasn't possible for me last week, because I was in Hawaii. Which was really nice, actually. I really enjoyed it. I was on this beautiful island with lush foliage and gorgeous beaches and surfing, and there was, like, volcanic rock there. And now I've got to come back to Duel Academy, which clearly has none of those things. It's just boring, isn't it? You know, something about this hair makes me want to get my game on. So without further ado, let's just jump right in to Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Episode 8, which is called For the Sake of Cyrus, which is a weird title because it's not any kind of pun or dad joke. Kind of feels like it's letting the side down. Every other title has been some sort of awful joke, and this is like For the Sake of Cyrus. I guess there's alliteration in there, but alliteration is a cheap substitute for for a shitty dad joke. Try harder, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Give me more terrible wordplay, please. Something. My hair is so beautiful. And the episode opens with Jaden filling out a form. Filling out some sort of paperwork in the Duel Shack. Man, what are you doing? You're in the Duel Shack and you're not buying trading cards or playing with trading cards. That's like the two activities that happen there. And as he's filling out this form, he thinks to himself, does Zane have one N or two Ns? And it sounds kind of ludicrous, because obviously Zane has one N. Like, everyone knows that. But Jaden is friends with Bastion. And if I were friends with Bastion, I would start to question if every word didn't have multiple N's in it. Because of course he pronounces every word with mm. at the end. Bastion. Mm. Zane. Mm. Duel Academy Finals. Mm. Stat screen. And so on. So anyway, it turns out Jaden's filling out a dual request form. And what? A dual request form? You're kidding me. After all that nonsense about if somebody challenges you to a duel, you just have to accept it. And now it turns out you gotta fill out a form? Imagine if Yami Yugi was like, it's time to duel. And then Jaden was like, actually, you have to fill out this form first. It would ruin everything. You'd never know when it was time to duel. It's time to f -f 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 fill out paperwork. It's weird doing that voice with this hair on. So yeah, Jaden's filling out the apparently lengthy paperwork that you need to uh, fill out in order to challenge someone to a children's card game in a school about card games. It's like, if you ask me, card games already kind of take long enough in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe. Did we really need to add paperwork to the whole thing? Just can't have too many steps involved, I guess. Good thing I didn't have to fill out any paperwork to get this beautiful hair. Crowler comes in and asks Jaden about the dual application form that he's filling in. And Jaden says, oh, I'm challenging Zane to a duel so that I can boost Cyrus's confidence so that we can succeed in that tag duel that we're having later on. And then Crowler just grabs the form and starts tearing it up. No! How are they gonna challenge each other to children's card games now? It's not like he can just walk up to the guy and ask him to play a card game with him. That would be normal. And it's not like Jaden could just Go get another form and fill it out again. Crowler is always one step ahead. And then of course we get the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme, which was once voted best Smash Mouth song to not have been written, performed, or conceived by Smash Mouth. It just gets my hair going. Shitty Jaden wig. Cyrus is in the Slifer dorm lying under his bed sheets and cradling his power bond spell card. And I can think of other things to be cradling while I'm lying in bed. Like a Karibo card. And... <laughs> Sorry, I keep seeing myself in the screen. And Cyrus says to himself, Oh man, I don't know a thing about dual monsters. I'm gonna let Jaden down. You know, Cyrus, it's actually scientifically impossible to let Jaden down. Because as we've learned from watching the show, he apparently has zero emotional investment in anything. He's watched his friends die and he's been like... Mm. 
so I don't think you have to worry about letting him down so much. And then Cyrus has this fantasy sequence where he imagines what the tag duel will be like, and I sh** you not, it sounds like he's dueling Tristan Taylor. Listen! You've gotta be kidding me! That's your move? Fine, then I'm gonna use my spell card to take control of your monster and attack! Jaden! I don't know what's more entertaining to me, the fact that that might be Tristan, or the fact that in this fantasy sequence, Jaden gets punched by a car. You know, I thought he was looking pretty tired. Beautiful hair. And after Cyrus has had his little dream sequence, we cut to Chumley, who is on a tree branch checking out his trading cards. Oh right, because he's a koala. They do actually warn you when you get to Australia that you might get challenged to a children's card game by one of the many drop bears that inhabit the area. And while he's up the tree, you can hear Chumley saying, It's not you, it's me. And for a terrifying moment, I'm worried that Chumley has taken a lover. But then it turns out he's talking to his trading cards. Woo! I was genuinely worried there for a minute. And then Chumley hears Jaden angrily talking to himself down below, and we see Jaden walking through the forest. Really miffed looking, like trudging along through the forest just sort of chuntering to himself. And it does make sense that the most emotional we've seen Jaden is as a result of him being denied the chance to challenge someone to a card game. And obviously when you're pissed off, the natural thing is to want to go walk through the forest. Just ask Alucard. Jaden is apparently very annoyed because Crowler told him he had to fill out the form in triplicate. Oh, and what, you're in the forest because you need to cut down a tree to make the paper? What are you doing in the forest, mate? Also, how come you can figure out how to polymerization summon literally everything under the sun, but you can't figure out how to fill out two more forms? Why are you bad at all basic activities, Jaden? Jaden Yuki, great at card games, bad at everything else. And sh Contra. Beautiful hair though. Jaden looks up and says, whoa, that's either a giant tree sloth or it's Chumley. And when it turns out to be Chumley, he's very disappointed. Because like everybody else, he's always wanted to challenge a giant tree sloth to a card game. Who hasn't? I have. Don't lie. You have too. Everyone has that dream. The giant tree sloth card game dream. Chumley drops all his cards and Jaden looks at them and has this very natural reaction. Wow, Chum. There's like... <laughs> A zillion koala cards down here. Yeah, they so rule. I love a good classic natural sounding Jaden laugh. <laughs> Very natural sounding, I think you'll agree. Chumley suggests that he and Jaden have a pickup duel, and Jaden says, A pickup duel? Why didn't I think of that? And he legs it, leaving Chumley all by himself with a vague sense of disappointment. His natural state. I feel like a washed up 80s rocker with this hair, but I do feel ready to summon Spick Me. And then we see Jaden at the Obelisk Blue Dome, and we don't very often and see the obelisk blue dome, so this is a nice surprise. Speaking of nice surprises, Jaden gets his ass kicked by two obelisk blue guys. Jaden asks what their problem is, and it turns out they don't think that he's worthy of facing Zane. And one of them tells Jaden that he's still wet behind the ears from pre duel school. Pre duel school. I keep forgetting that's a thing. What do they teach you in pre duel school? How to draw the Egyptian god cards in finger paint. Because that's a quick way to get your kid's soul taken by the Egyptian gods. Jaden insists that he's not wet behind the ears, and so an Obelisk Blue student chucks water in his face from a bucket he just happened to be holding. What were you doing with a bucket? Or is that just some of Bastion's condescending drool that you've collected as like a natural resource? Gotta save all this Bastion drool in case of an emergency. What was he doing with a bucket? What was he gonna use that for? Or is it just the bucket they have in case Jade and Yuki comes round so they can chuck it in his face? That's a good use for a bucket. I should have a bucket on hand at all times, just in case Jaden happens to show his cocky little face around here. Jaden's actually really angry about all this. Presumably because he's gotten three hours into the day and he hasn't played a single card game with anybody. Jaden gets back to the Slifer Red Dorm and chastises Cyrus for spending all day in bed and points out that even Chumley got out of bed this morning. And Chumley says, lousy bladder. Chumley gets out of his bed for two things. Exploring abandoned dorms that could result in his kidnapping or taking a sh just those two things. Jaden checks under the covers and Cyrus isn't even under there. There's just a pillow there under the sheets pretending to be Cyrus. Oh my god, Jaden actually fell for Odeon's fluffed pillow trick. If only Jaden had been Marek's dad instead of the evil psychopath that actually was. Everything would have been fine. Actually, I think Marek might have gone even more crazy if he had to put up with Jaden's catchphrases his whole life. Jaden finds a note left by Cyrus that says he's just going to be holding Jaden back, so he's leaving Duel Academy. No! 
Cyrus! You can't leave Dual Academy! You might have to attend a normal school where people have ordinary haircuts and Bastion is not there! And they aren't segregated into an elitist system of colored dorms. No! Don't do it, Cyrus! Don't leave and go to an ordinary school which gives you a normal education which gives you the potential for more options in the future other than Duelist. That would be the worst decision you could make! Uh, apparently. Actually, you know what? It does sound like you should probably just leave. Also, I think it's really adorable that Cyrus thinks he's holding Jaden back. As if Jaden would allow something like friendship or the existence of another person in his life to change anything about what he does. Jaden says that they're gonna stop Cyrus from leaving. And Chumley says, can we stop him after dinner? It's grilled cheese day. He's fat! And then we see Jaden and Chumley just sort of wandering around Duel Academy Island looking for Cyrus, like just in random directions. What are you guys doing? Do you think he was like, I'm gonna leave Duel Academy and then just walked toward the ocean? What? Why don't you go check the dock where the boats are? Or anywhere that has transportation that would actually get Cyrus off the island, not like random field. Why would he be like, I'm leaving Duel Academy. Okay, time to go hide on Duel Academy. What do you think Cyrus is? Do you think he's some sort of idiot who's gonna try and leave the island of his own volition. Oh my god, Cyrus is just some sort of idiot who's gonna try and leave the island of his own volition on a sh little raft that he's made. Hang on, what kind of a teenager struggles to play trading card games but is perfectly capable of constructing a raft from scratch? Where did he get the materials? Do they just have like a raft shack right next to the dual shack? What is it, Rafts R Us? What's going on? Where did you get that raft, Cyrus? Back with Chumley and Jaden, and Jaden's winged Karibo card starts to glow with an ethereal light. But it makes it look for all the world like the sun is literally shining out of Jaden Yuki's ass. Which is appropriate as that's exactly how Jaden views himself. Winged Karibo floats out of Jaden's deck and Jaden asks it for help with locating Cyrus. And Winged Karibo is apparently happy to oblige. Hold on, is Winged Karibo like the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe's equivalent of Lassie? I wish Yami Yugi could have had his own Karibo friend who helped him solve mysteries. Doodala! What is it, boy? Doodala! Marek is trapped down a well? Doodala! Oh, it's not a well, it's a tomb. Doodala! My tomb. Doodala la la! And his entire ancestry has been in servitude to me since the day that I died. Doodala. Well, I suppose I'd better go put a stop to that. Show would have been a lot shorter. The winged Karibo heads in Cyrus's direction and Jaden gives chase. And Chumley complains that not only are they missing Grilled Cheese Day, now they have to run. He's fat! At the Dual Academy Lighthouse, Zane is in his brooding place. And then Alexis walks right up to him. And I want you to watch this clip very closely and pay attention to the footsteps. What the f***? There was like a whole extra footstep that should not have been there. Does Alexis have some sort of invisible third leg? You know what? Yeah, yeah, she does. Yeah, that's canon. Alexis has an invisible third leg. Now that I have said it, it must be canon. That's weird, that footstep thing. Zane asks Alexis if she has any new leads on the location of her brother. And Alexis says no. She keeps looking for some sign, but it's like he vanished without a trace. Are you not going to mention the fact that you were kidnapped by the Undertaker at the abandoned dorm? I guess that's just the kind of everyday occurrence that happens to Alexis, the woman with the invisible third leg. And then suddenly both of them hear Cyrus's voice and they turn to see Jaden leaping over Cyrus on the raft and landing on it, at which point it just shatters. He just obliterates the raft by landing on it. <laughs> and you're probably thinking, well, Cyrus didn't do a very good job of making that raft then, did he? But in actual fact, the reason why the raft was destroyed quite so easily is because Jaden has so many elemental hero trading cards on his person that the raft couldn't take the weight. He's got thousands of them. And then for some reason the episode just cuts to footage from a nature documentary showing a couple of sea anemones mating. Oh no wait, that's just Cyrus and Jaden's hair. Their beautiful hair. Their sweaty man hair. Cyrus panics and says he can't swim. And Jaden takes this moment to say this. Help me, I can't swim. And you were about to raft out into the ocean? That makes sense. All right, Jaden, maybe save the wisecracks for a moment where your friend might not be drowning. Just a thought. And then Chumley describes the plot of this show. It's shallow. Nah. Jaden and Cyrus stand up in the shallow water and Jaden demands to know why Cyrus is leaving. And Cyrus says that if he leaves, then Jaden will get a new tag partner and have more chance of winning. And Jaden says, that's your brother talking. You've got to believe in yourself. You know, Jaden is basically a humanoid version of Parappa the Rapper, especially in the abridged version. I hadn't even thought about that. <laughs> 
Cyrus says that he's a lost cause, and from up above, Zane says he's right, you know. And Zane asks Cyrus if he's dropping out, and Cyrus says yeah, and so Zane says it's about time. What the hell? Like, I'm legitimately baffled by why he's being so... Is this one of those things where it's tough love and he's trying to just get him to stand up for himself? Because it's kind of a sh way of doing it because he's obviously been doing it for years years there's a point where it goes from tough love to just plain old everyday abuse I, abusive i'm sorry i if he's trying to do it to be nice then no i don't care for it cyrus starts crying understandably and Jaden says you're his big brother how could you say this stuff to him and zane says because i know him and Jaden says yeah i bet you think you know it all but guess what you don't oh he served you zane Sass him with your beautiful hair. Our protagonist, ladies and gentlemen, essentially resorting to, I know you are, but what am I? Jaden challenges Zane to a duel, and so Zane says, Sure, why not? After all, it's been a while since I went slumming. Mate, you are the top student at a school for card games. Your closest rival at this school is a person called Chaz. I'm pretty sure that is one of the dictionary definitions of slumming it. You could be the lead singer of a band called Slum 41 or Mumford and Slums. Jaden defiantly tells Zane to get his game on. And then Jaden thinks to himself that this duel will solve Cyrus's confidence problem without hurting Jaden's. Yeah, because your confidence problem is that you have an infinite amount of it. Your ego pressed like up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA star or summer. Later that night at the Academy Island Lighthouse, Jaden and Zane are set to card game each other in the face. And Jaden delivers yet another natural sounding read. Now we find out what's going on with Cy and his bro, and we find out how I rank with the best. Let's add that one to the vault of very natural sounding Jaden reads. Jaden starts things off by summoning elemental hero Evan in attack mode and then throwing a face down, down. Down. Zane is unimpressed and summons his Cyber Dragon, which looks like Ultron if he were a dragon, which is probably a thing that has happened at some point in the Marvel Universe, given how much random sh** seems to happen. Jaden is pissed because Zane shouldn't be able to summon a level 5 monster in his first turn, and Zane explains that he can summon Cyber Dragon whenever he has no monsters on the field. And Jaden's like, oh yeah, context, I forgot about that. Meanwhile, Jaden has yet to explain how he's able to summon monsters in face-up defense mode all the time. I'm never gonna let that go. Never. Zane plays Mystical Space Typhoon, which I know is a very commonly used card, but I have to give props to the name Mystical Space Typhoon, because there's magic involved, and space, and also a natural weather phenomenon. It sounds like a Roland Emmerich movie waiting to happen, and he uses Mystical Space Typhoon to destroy Jaden's face down card. I guess that means he threw up a face down. Oh, that sounds gross. Jaden says, that was fast, and Zane says, not as fast as your life points are gonna go down, and then he attacks with Cyber Dragon and destroys elemental hero Avion. And Cyrus thinks to himself, I tried to warn him that Zane was good. It's been one f***ing turn. Why is nobody able to go a single turn in this show without it being considered the most important turn of all time? Like, Zane didn't do that much better or worse than Jaden. He just had those cards, and he was able to attack on that turn because it wasn't the first turn. It's not like he just performed a masterclass on dueling. He just had a turn and attacked successfully. But yeah, no, standing ovation, I guess. Zane activates his spell card, Different Dimension Capsule, which summons like a weird, funky looking sarcophagus thing. I should mention that that is exactly what Pharaoh the Cat's litter box looks like. Yeah, it's kind of perverse. Meow. Zane explains that this card allows him to choose any card from his deck put it inside the capsule and then draw it to his hand two turns from now. And Jaden says, that's gotta be the best card in his entire deck. And I'm like, you've seen three of his cards so far, Jaden. How could you? There's 37 other cards that could potentially be better than this. But no, you're right. It's been like two whole turns. So obviously, you know exactly what his deck has in store. Jaden then thinks to himself that this Zane guy might not just be as good as people say he is. He might be better. He has destroyed one monster and one trap card. But no, you're right, he also activated a spell card successfully. He must be the best duelist in the whole 
King Universe. He can't be that good anyway. He doesn't even have beautiful hair like me. And then Jaden adds, that still doesn't mean he's better than me. Just the zero humility in Jaden, is there? Like, absolutely none. I'm kind of amused by it. Jaden starts his second turn by announcing that he's going to rock polymerization. Yeah, he literally says that he's going to rock polymerization. He couldn't just say activate. He couldn't just say use. He's going to rock polymerization. Here's the line for reference. And first I'll rock polymerization. Polymerization, I'm going to rock your world. I'm gonna invite two of my friends over and we're gonna fuse. Mmm. Gonna rock you, polymerization. Jaden fuses Spirkmean, 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 and Clayman, Clayman, Clayman. Jaden fuses Elemental Hero Sparkman and Clayman to bring out Elemental Hero Thundercles. Thunder Giant's ability allows it to destroy Cyber Dragon without attacking because it has less attack than him. And then Jaden attacks Zane directly with Thunder Giant. And hang on, Zane just sort of stares at the attack and doesn't even flinch when it hits him. So wait a second. Are we supposed to believe that up until this point everybody else has just been pretending to get seriously hurt by all the attacks that the monsters do, especially the electrical ones, but Zane is the only one who isn't playing along. How come up until this point everybody else has been seriously affected by all the attacks of the dual monsters to the point of acting like they're in serious pain? But then when Zane gets punched in the face by one of the strongest electrical monsters in the game right now, his f ugly mug doesn't even react. What's going on? Is everybody else just pretending like the attacks hurt? Even people that aren't in the duels? Because remember Crowler got zapped by Thunder Giant and he acted like he was being murdered? But Zane takes a shot to the face and it's nothing. The only excuse that I will accept is that Zane is just an emotionally dead person and he's not going to react to anything that happens. In order to become a better duelist he's had all the nerves in his body cauterized so that he can focus exclusively on card games. Is it like Pinball Wizard where being deaf, dumb and blind made him a better pinball player? Does not having feelings make you a better duelist? Sh no wonder I'm shit at the game. I have nothing but feelings. I'm just a big ball of feelings. I guess I've got to become an emotionally numb person if I want to be a good duelist like Zane. That's all there is to it. Jaden Yuki, the class clown from Loser Town, throws down a face down. Zane starts his turn and since he's got no monsters on the field, he's able to summon another Cyber Dragon and then he uses Monster Reborn, he's won the duel, hasn't he, to bring out another Cyber Dragon. And for your consideration, here is Zane Truesdale of Duel Academy with one of the fans fanciest reveals of a polymerization card known to man. But neither will be here long in present form. Ooh, that's a fancy reveal. Gotta say, I can see why the ladies like him. Zane fuses his two Cyber Dragons into Cyber Twin Dragon, which is like a bigger Cyber Dragon except with two heads. Cyber Twin Dragon can attack twice, which Zane says is trouble for Jaden's life points, but Jaden activates a Hero Emerges, which allows him to summon Rottweiler to the field in defense mode. Rottweiler? What is it? What? He's got all these elemental heroes and then just a fucking dog. At least call it like Elemental Hero Underdog or something. I don't know. It's just weird to see him with a card that isn't some sort of superhero trope, you know? The Cyber Twin Dragon destroys both of Jaden's monsters, but then Rottweiler's special effect allows Jaden to draw a polymerization card and one elemental hero card from his GY. And then Jaden and Zane share this exchange. The other way around. And just when you thought you could probably stop worrying about him, huh Zane? I don't worry. Why should I worry? Why should I care? I may not have a dime, but I've got street savoir faire. Jaden is impressed by Zane's ability to stay chill and says, you're good. And Zane says, you too, Jaden. And Cyrus is shocked because apparently this is the first time he's seen his brother express any kind of positive human interaction. Jaden summons elemental hero Bubble Man, which apparently makes a sound not unlike a Muppet Pterodactyl. Elemental hero Bubble Man in attack mode. <laughs> Jaden then uses Bubble Man's special ability to draw winged Karibo and transcendent wings. And Jaden thinks to himself that an evolved winged Karibo could turn Zane's Cyber Dragon into a pile of cyber junk. What, you're gonna turn it into a pile of dicks? Oh no, he means actual junk, I see. I really wanted to see him turn a monster into a pile of dicks. 
Jaden uses polymerization to fuse Elemental Hero Bubbleman with Elemental Hero Clayman to bring out Elemental Hero Mudball Man, who looks to me like that yellow devil bloke from the Smash Brothers Mega Man level. Only not yellow. This is proclaimed to be licious by Chumley, who says that Mudball Man's defense points should be enough to protect Jaden. But then Zane brings back his different dimension capsule. And it's a little bit awkward because Pharaoh the cat is sitting on it in mid poop. And then the capsule explodes and the card that Zane put in there is now in his hand. Zane takes this moment to explain that being a great duelist doesn't just mean knowing what your cards do, it means knowing how to use them. Wait, so the lesson that he's teaching us is in order to be a good duelist, you have to know how to play. Is that the lesson? Am I misunderstanding? Cause that's a pretty f***ing stupid lesson. Come on, man. I'd take get your game on over that. Cyrus perks up at this and says that now he realizes that this was the lesson that Zane was trying to teach him all those years ago. Hey, you know what would have been a not d thing to do? Telling Cyrus the lesson and not shaming him into learning it. Because clearly you're capable of sharing that lesson with people without abusing them, as you are now doing to Jaden. So why couldn't you just tell your brother the lesson? Why couldn't you just tell him? Why couldn't you just tell him? No, you see, he's got to be a dick. It's an important part of his character, being a dick. Zane activates Defusion, which separates his Cyber Twin Dragon into two separate Cyber Dragons. And then he activates his Power Bond. And this causes Cyrus to gasp or have an orgasm. I'm not entirely convinced which one it is. I'll activate the magic of Power Bond. And then Zane summons Cyber End Dragon. And I, I got really excited when I saw Cyber End Dragon because I realized that Paradox in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Bonds Beyond Time movie must have taken this from Zane. So it just gave me the image in my head of Paradox like confronting Zane and being like, you will deliver unto me your greatest card protagonist. And Zane just being like, I have no emotions. I'm not bothered by any of this, man. You are very annoying for a protagonist. I'm not even a protagonist, man. I'm just someone's brother. Power Bond causes Cyber End Dragon's attack to be raised all the way to 8,000. And Zane explains that the special effect of his Cyber End Dragon means that the difference between his money Mudball Man's defense points and his Cyber End Dragon's attack points will be taken out of Jaden's life points. F that was difficult. I had to do like a million takes of that. How do the duelists in Yu-Gi-Oh do that? <laughs> All the time. Chumley hilariously continues to cheer Jaden on, saying that if he survives the next turn, then Power Bond's effect will mean that Zane will lose. And then Alexis starts explaining the effects of Power Bond to everybody. And I'm like, hold the f on. Cyrus clearly knows what Power Bond does because he has one. Jaden also clearly knows what Power Bond does because he was just talking to Cyrus about it in their duel in the pre previous episode. Zane obviously knows what Power Bond does because he's the one who gave it to Cyrus and he's using it right now. And Chumley clearly knows what Power Bond does because he was just talking about it two seconds ago. So who the f*** is Alexis explaining this for? She's basically explaining a card that everyone has intimate knowledge of in this scenario. F*** off with your dual splaining Alexis. Zane Cyber End Dragon attacks and defeats Jaden so I don't know why Chumley was cheering him on because there really wasn't any chance of surviving. Zane attacks Jaden with his Cyber End Dragon and causes it to be the Cyber End of the duel because Jaden loses. Wait, what? The protagonist just lost relatively early on in the show? And there weren't any shenanigans? It was a completely clean loss? What the f***? I genuinely didn't expect that. <laughs> no, okay, yeah, I'm down for this. Jaden just lost, okay, he's not infallible. Wow, okay, that... Okay. Jaden thanks Zane for an awesome duel, and then Zane and Cyrus have a meaningful stare off. Zane takes his leave, and Alexis rushes to catch up with him, which is easy because you got three fing legs, apparently. Alexis asks Zane what he thinks, and Zane says, I think my brothers picked some good friends. Really? Have you seen them? One of them looks like this, and the other one's Chumley. Man, wait till he finds out that Cyrus has also been hanging out with Bastion. He gonna be pissed. Jaden unironically tells Cyrus that his brother has mad skill. Yeah, that, that was dialogue once. Jaden and Cyrus share a bromantic bromant. And then Jaden, Cyrus, and Chumley all rush back to the Slifer Red Dorm together. And they have one of those cliche freeze frame montages, which I now present to you unedited. <laughs> So yeah, that was episode 8 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX for the sake of Cyrus. I gotta say, mixed feelings on Zane. Am I supposed to enjoy 
his dickish behavior, because I don't enjoy dicks that much. I mean, I do like a good dick, but I think Zane, there's just too much dick there. Just can't take that much dick. Maybe if I get a little less dick from him, then I'll feel more at ease with him. But right now, eh, it's too much. Too much dick. But it seems like Cyrus has learned a few things from the duel, such as figure out how to play your fucking cards, and then you'll be good. Good thing that he had an abusive brother to teach him that lesson. Yeah. Do you guys like Zane? Is he a popular character? Did he get better? Don't spoil the show for me, but do you like Zane? What do you think about him? Do you like him in general? I know some people who had massive crushes on him, and I'm like, why? I guess he's kind of attractive. His haircut's kind of nonsense. Looks like an idiot. He doesn't have beautiful natural hair like me. He'll never match up, sorry. It's real. Well, thanks for watching the video, but before I wrap things up, I want to give a shout out to all of our patrons. You guys, all the support you give to us is incredible. It has allowed me to regrow this beautiful head of hair, which I think without you guys, I just wouldn't have had it in me to grow this much beautiful, luxurious hair back with as much efficiency or speed. You guys did that. That's why people pledge to our Patreon is to help me grow beautiful, boyish hair. That's why it's there. That's why we have it. But cheers for watching, guys. I'm sorry again for the delay with this video. I'm hoping that I, I've nipped that in the bud. I don't want to have too many more delays with these reviews. It drives me crazy. I got really upset about it. But uh, hopefully it won't be too long before you see the next one, which is episode nine, I think. It's the tag duel. Are they... Is it the tag duel next? Are they there yet? I guess we'll find out on the next episode of Little Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX with his beautiful hair. Ah, what is that? Huh? Aha! Uh -huh.